Hi, I'm Elena Grody, Natural Resources Manager for the Columbus Recreation and Parks Department. We're really lucky here because we have wood frogs that breed in this pool. What makes it so special is wood frogs are one of the best in indicators of vernal pools. If you have wood frogs, it means you have a pretty good vernal pool. Wood frogs are found throughout the northern part of the United States and into Canada. In fact, they're one of the highest ranging frogs within North America, going all the way up close to the Arctic Circle. They are also found in the southern portions along the Appalachian Plateau. Now how do you tell what frog is a wood frog? A great way to tell is by just looking at their eyes. They have a black mask, kind of like a raccoon, so it's very easy to tell. They're also one of the very first amphibians that comes to vernal pools in the spring. They usually show up between mid-February and mid-March. The reason they can get here so early in the season is very, very cool. They hibernate in the leaf litter in the woods, so they don't bury down into the ground like many amphibians do. That means they're just right under the snow, and in fact, their body freezes while they're hibernating. In fact, up to 35 to 45% of their body becomes ice. The neat thing about that is they can make the ice form inside their bodies, but not inside their cells. It's in the space between their cells. They keep their cells safe because of certain special proteins and glucose that prevents the cell walls from bursting open. So on that first warm day in the spring, when it gets to be above 50 degrees, these critters are thawing out and on their way to their vernal pool to breed. Males come to the breeding pool first in the spring to establish their territories. Also during the breeding season, the arms, the front arms of the male wood frogs actually become enlarged as well as the pads on their toes. That helps them hold on to the female while they're breeding. That's called amplexus. When they are, they are holding on to the female, they're waiting for her to lay her eggs that they can then fertilize. They'll hold on to a female for up to 24 hours. Then, once she lays her eggs, they'll fertilize the eggs and then they're pretty much done. Uh, wood frogs stay in a breeding pool only about a couple of weeks, so they're here very quickly. The wood frogs, you can hear them when they're there because the males are calling out their territory. Their call sounds very much like a duck quack, so it's not what you would normally think of as a frog call. When the females lay their eggs, they lay them in a shallow end of the vernal pool, usually near vegetation or fallen down logs. If there's a very large population of wood frogs, they'll actually lay them in a big communal mass. So it's just like one big mass of eggs. If it's a smaller population, then they're much more individually separated out, the egg masses. They found that the strategy of laying them in one big communal mass actually does two things. One, it protects protects them from predation, and it actually increases the water temperature by almost two degrees centigrade, which helps those eggs develop faster. If you're in a pool and the water's pretty cold, this egg development is pretty slow. Eggs will hatch in about 10 to 30 days, depending on the water temperature, as I said. Um, the warmer it is, the faster that they will hatch out. The total time they're in a vernal pool is about 145 days, so they are one of the fastest developing amphibians in vernal pools. Getting in the vernal pool, you know, as I said, mid-February and leaving mid-June to mid-July, depending on the water temperature. This helps them with their survival strategy because the faster they can develop and get out on land, the better their survival rate is once they get to that adult form. What they eat uh, when they come out, first they eat their, their egg, the jelly around them. Uh, that's their first meal. Then they'll eat some algae and other tiny invertebrates as they grow around. Uh, they can even eat each other. Unfortunately, they are very cannibalistic and will eat other wood frog tadpoles as well as the larvae of spotted salamanders and American toads. As the larvae develop, into juvenile frogs, they will make their way onto land and change their eating habit habits now that they become adults. In fact, within a couple weeks they already look like small adults with the black markings around the eyes. 
Adult wood frogs eat flies, spiders, mosquitoes, slugs, earthworms, a variety of different animals. So their, their diet changes from being one that's, you know, pretty herbivorous in the pool to one that's kind of carnivorous on land. Some animals that prey on wood frogs are black racers, garter snakes, northern water snakes, skunks, foxes, raccoons, coyotes, and even snapping turtles, as well as birds as green herons and great blue herons. Now, migration to and from the vernal pools, as we said, happens generally in the spring. The adults don't mature on time to breed until they're like two years old. But it's interesting we find that juveniles that are only one year old will also migrate to these breeding pools, usually a little later than the adults. They think that maybe they're setting up the pattern of where they are going to breed um, in the future when they become breeding adults. The threats to wood frogs are mostly habitat destruction and impact upon their vernal pools. We found in urban areas, wood frogs have a very hard time surviving. In our urban wetland study in 2006, we found that within Franklin County, in our study area, over 40% of the upland pools had been destroyed since the 1980s, which is a large number. Another thing to consider is the habitat that they live in. It's not just the vernal pool that they breed in, but the woodlands around the vernal pools that they rely on for most of their life. When those woodlands are destroyed, you're destroying the habitat for wood frogs as well. We need places like this protected, whether they're big or small. That's what these animals need to survive and to live.